Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Talk Tissue. Today, we will be talking with Mark Cooper, the owner and founder of Tissue Plus. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we really look forward to talking to you about uh, about Tissue Plus. Uh, it's an exciting venture, and I think there has been a lot of uh, already buzz on the internet, LinkedIn, about your company, and I think it's a, an appropriate, great time to talk to you. Well, thanks, Brian. Uh, nice to talk to you, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's jump right into it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Tissue Plus, uh, maybe um, how it started, um, its purpose and where, where, where its place is in the tissue industry today. Sure. Well, um, I, I come from, uh, about a 30 year background in the paper industry. Um, not so much in the tissue side of things, but I have a strong relationship and history uh, in the industry. So a few years ago, um, an opportunity came about to, um, <clears throat> help a, a mill up in Maine with a big problem they had uh, with a large accumulation of, call them oversized rolls of paper. Yeah. And so um, being in the buying and selling side of the business, figured that might be a good opportunity to, to use as a base of operations to help get started. And so we actually designed um, machines, a special size to handle their oversized rolls and um, put in five lines um, to to get started up in Bangor, Maine. And um, that was kind of a labor of love because the building we purchased also um, needed a lot of work. So we had to go through a renovation at the same time getting a new factory started. And what, when was that? What, what, uh, when did you guys get started? So the, we purchased the building in the summer of 2019. Okay. And um, by the end of the year, we were we had two Slitter Rewinders running, uh, doing pretty much parent role, uh, converting, selling to other converters. And um, that was the extent of what we were able to do with the power uh, requirements. Sure. We had to put a new electric service in as well, so. Wow. So at what point did you start converting the, the paper into final product? So um, ironically, <laughs> right about February of right. last year, when, um, when the world was going crazy, we um, literally were thrust into a, a go mode, even though we, we didn't even have our cranes installed yet. We purchased a, a carry deck crane so we could manually put the 5,000 pound rolls on the on the winders and, wow. and um, converting lines. So that was uh, quite an adventure. And uh, we were pretty popular for a short time. Um, <laughs> and like you said, we did get a lot of attention. Just yeah. people thought we had a crystal ball um you know what are the chances of opening a, a tissue converting factory uh in the height of the pandemic and tissue toilet paper the most coveted commodity in the world so so we definitely um got i would say lucky but yeah. we had worked, worked pretty hard you know for a year and a half prior to that to get to that point and obviously had purchased the machines and made the significant investment in the facility um so when we got started we were producing basically JRT, hard wand towel, okay. um, multi-fold towel for the industrial away from home markets, and then bath tissue, um, again, for away from home. But at that point, um, people were buying it for retail. Sure. So at what point did you make the pivot? You're making all this away from home and obviously with all the stadiums and, and movie theaters and everything that people do outside, all that stuff was shut down. And the big news at the time was when is that going to come back? And I think we're still anticipating when is it going to come back at the same level maybe it was before. Um, so how did you pivot? How did that how did that work for for tissue? Well, plus? pivots pivots the operative word because that's exactly what we did. Because as as fast as um, things spiked up, they pretty much died just as fast. Um, yeah. So after you know about a month or two of production. We, the phone stopped ringing. Um, oh, so <laughs> we um, we definitely had a had a pivot. And ironically, what happened was uh, because the whole supply chain for many commodities had gotten disrupted, we were approached and ended up converting our operation to basically a roll converting factory for uh, sanitary wipes. Oh, okay. Hand wipes. 
Yeah. So we we made some modifications to the machines, purchased some additional machines, contracted with outside vendors, and basically went 24/7 as much as we could produce for you know four or five months, and and that really carried us through the you know the, the sort of second third uh, quarter of, of last year, um, and even right through to the end of the year. So that we were very fortunate that we were able to to uh, adjust and, and adapt to uh, meet those needs. But what happened, of course, is you know with all of our focus in that segment, our primary plan, like you mentioned, to get establish our own line, really got put on hold. Um, and over that period of time, we uh, the market obviously changed. So when we were ready to start producing finished goods again, there was there wasn't much of a market. Yeah. So we also have been we also have um, been really focusing on trying to get some retail um, napkin lines and um, away from home lines set up as well. So I um, think I mentioned to you earlier we're in the process of opening a factory in Hagerstown, Maryland. Wow. That's going to primarily be a napkin converting operation. We will be making lunch and dinner napkins, interfold napkins, single fold napkins, and other folded products. What made you choose Hagerstown? Just out of curiosity, why why Maryland? Well, there was a series of events that sort of brought us there initially, and and then we ended up uh, storing a lot of machines there. So um, an opportunity came up to um, collaborate with a with a with a company that was well entrenched into that space, had a good experience um, operating facilities and had a good workforce. So okay. it was a good, it was a good opportunity for us to partner um, with them to, you know, deploy our assets and machines to, you know, start making finished goods. Very nice. So it, it does seem like you have a lot of flexibility, uh, the company being this new and your, your timing obviously was impeccable for good and bad, for good and bad reasons. Uh, you know, you came in, you came on board right at the beginning of the pandemic and you've been able to, like you said, pivot to wipes and now you're getting into napkins. So it's very impressive how you guys, how you've been able to, to pivot and now hopefully start to find your niche, right? Right as people are getting vaccinated, the market's starting to open up again. Um, it, it's pretty interesting to see where you guys will end up after all this comes back. Yeah, I'm kind of curious myself. <laughs> um, so we do we do have a third element to the business too. I mean, we have the, the contract converting that we have been doing and frankly are, are looking to do more of. So for anybody out there that, that needs um, contract converting for you know, away from home, not that there's a huge demand for that right now, sure. but um, we do have some packaging machines and we have, we, we purchased a lot of used machines as well that we saw as an opportunity to, um, you know, to to um, buy machines that we wouldn't otherwise be able to afford at this early juncture. Yeah. So we got a little crazy with the machine buying, um, but the the end game is to obviously deploy all of these machines and have the ancillary packaging as well, which is obviously a key and why a lot of people weren't able to meet demand last year because they didn't have the packaging to do the the retail at home, you know, products. And, and we were sort of in the same boat, um, but um, one I'll, I'll mention as well. So we, so the third element of ours, so we have the contract converting and we have the finished goods sales, which we're, you know, slowly um, starting to implement. And then uh, we also do contract uh, rewinding and parallel sales. So we've been selling uh, parent rolls of tissue towel napkins to other converters as well. Okay. And, um, we're converting most of that paper in Maine currently. Wow. Okay. I'm sure you will get a, a, a lot of phone calls uh, once the away from home comes back for a contract converting. I think that will, uh, that will happen. The good thing about having too much equipment, used equipment, is that you have the equipment and you don't have to wait a year, a year and a half to get it made and manufactured and put it in your facility. So Let, you have it. So. Yeah, and you can always resell it. So that that's uh, that's always a possibility. There's always a secondary market for this machinery. Um, so, do you have a presence online? Can people find your products online? How can people currently find your products? So, because of the, the pandemic last year, we did uh, institute a 
direct to consumer model and done a, had done, done a so, subscription service, mm -hmm. uh, an annual service, which pretty much just uh, finished, completed our first year. Okay. And we decided that really wasn't the direction we wanted to go at the moment. Um, so most of our sales right now um, has been focused on parent role converting okay. and just starting again to revisit the industrial away from home lines. We, we have three other you know, industrial lines that aren't currently operating as well. So we have the capacity to ramp up there as demand uh, increases. And the other thing we, we did was get um, involved in a little bit more, as I said, the white business and some non woven yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been offering our services up to companies just looking to do roll to roll, converting with perforation, embossing, um, anything we can do to generate some income and um, establish some new relationships. Sure. And, and in my sure. opinion, I don't think the white business is going anywhere after the pandemic. I think that's that's a business that's here to stay and possibly just it's going to grow. So I think you you're, doing, you're going the right direction there. Well, just to have the, the flexibility to, to yeah. do that um, as the opportunity presents itself. The pipeline definitely filled up pretty significantly with all the imports, um, which, by the way, is a huge factor right now. The cost, I'm sure you know, the cost of yeah. free for importing parent roles and finished goods has gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that impacts domestic production. And again, hopefully it'll open up some doors for us if we have, you know, the parent role inventory and um, the capability to make finished goods. We, we maintain a pretty significant parent role inventory. Okay. So okay. we try to have, um, you know, product on hand for when people need it, um, but it's always fluctuating. Yeah, of course. And I think as you get your name out there, you participate in events like this, uh, people will get to know you more and more. You've only been in business, it's, it's uh, in less than two years, or a little bit more than two years, actually. So um, yeah. I think- A little over a year in production, really. A little over a year in production. So yeah. you're still getting your name out. And uh, I, I really appreciate you taking the time talking to us. And uh, I hope you see the value in talking with us. And uh if you have anything else you'd like to add, I really appreciate your time. Um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate you reaching out. And I, I will mention again, I don't know, um, you know where this is going to take us, but we, we did just open a, um, a kitchen towel line oh, in wow. Southern Texas as well. Okay. Um, so we'll be producing kitchen roll towel there. Again, mostly for the away from home. It's, it's not a, a retail setup um, per se. But it's a great option for you know the distributors um, and um, away from home um, customer base in that region. So, what diameter of, of towel are you talking? So you talking about the finished roll size? Yeah, or? yeah. So we can we can make between seventy and one hundred sheets or or more. Okay, um, makes a beautiful laminated product. Um, it's not a huge line, but. We had the asset and figured it made sense to deploy and um, put the product out of the market. So we can do it's the standard 11 by 8.8 .8, um, okay. sheet, uh, which is you know for the C stores or um, distribution away from home. Wow, very exciting! That's good. So you're kind of spreading out. You're, you're growing and you know you're taking your time to get there, but it's you're, you're well, standing. Yeah, and like like you said, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see <laughs> um, where it goes. Yeah. It's it's not for lack of effort, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I would encourage everybody watching to take the time to visit your website. You want to give your website a plug? Sure, it's uh it's a tissueplus.com. Um, awesome. Pretty straightforward, and again, it's uh, it's a work in progress, but at least uh, you can find us there and get a, a sense of some of the products we make and um, the corporate image we're trying to establish. Yeah. No, oh, perfect. Mark, thank you so much. Everyone reach out to Mark if you if you need help with converting, if you need parent roles, if you have you have extra capacity, uh, whatever the case, seems like they're a one stop shop for for tissue, the tissue industry. So thanks, well, Mark. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate your time.